the giant shark that terrorized the oceans some 20 million years ago. For 13 million years, this 60-ton beast dominated the warm waters of our planet. Though, some believe that the Meg still lives in the most remote and deepest parts of the ocean. It's a hot summer day. It seems only logical to go for a swim in the sea. You're floating on your back, completely relaxed. Your eyes are closed. Your breath is even. Waters pleasantly cool around your body. A light breeze touches your face. You feel calm enough to doze off. Suddenly, something bumps into your leg. Yanked out of your half-slumber, you begin to flail until you're face-to-face -face with the invisible danger. Luckily, all you spot is a couple of easily recognizable fins and cute smiley snouts. Phew, just dolphins. Guess you're lucky to meet them in the wild. These amazing creatures are so close, you can touch them. You've heard people say dolphins' skin feels rubbery, but to your mind, it's more like the inner part of a hard-boiled egg. One of the animals is so close to you that its salty smell fills your nostrils. You know, though, that dolphins don't have sweat glands. It means they don't sweat and are pretty much odorless. The smell you sense comes from the water they swim in. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the megalodon shark dominated the seas for centuries before coming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth, which are just about the size of the average human hand. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, those teeth landed in the seabed where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor. Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad-tooth mako shark. That means megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the great white after all. In reality, the megalodon would have a shorter nose than the great white, along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. They both had an excellent sense of smell though, so even in prehistoric times, it wasn't a good idea to go swimming with a chunk of raw meat in hand. And it certainly isn't safe now. Whether the Meg's hiding somewhere in the depths, which some still believe is true, or it's gone forever, younger cousins will still be there waiting. Also, both of them like to go after big marine mammals, so they would certainly have things to do together. That is, until the Meg got moody and accidentally ate its friend. Eh, you never know. These guys had a different hunting style. Great whites prefer to dive straight towards their prey and find its softest spot, like exposed legs or underbelly. Sometimes, an entire tooth would be found embedded in a bone of some bigger animal, such as a whale. Without the main parts they use for swimming, poor sea animals were then helpless and unable to escape. Yet whales were just a smaller part of Megalodon's diet. Seals, sea cows, squids, dolphins, other sharks, the good old Meg probably wouldn't say no to some random school of smaller fish swimming into its mouth either. Nothing better than a good snack after a big tasty dinner. Even those giant turtles weren't safe with their thick shells. The Meg probably took them as a dare challenge on a daily basis. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. 
modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. Some people believe that the megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean's waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the megalodon to eat at deep sea level. Simply put, if there was an animal as big as the megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. It is unlikely that you'll run into a meg though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. The fearsome name Megalodon comes from two Greek words, megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that over time, deep sea levels dropped and the ocean's temperature went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and the number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The megalodon is usually described as a sort of great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the meg, but they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter using its smaller size and agility to snap up the meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't exactly help the whole extinction thing. While a great white was no match for an adult meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the meg, but its food supplies began to run out as whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the meg behind. The megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the ice age. Rather than a great white, the megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too.